Yes, I cancelled my Adobe subscription. As a little New Year gift for you guys, please allow me to share with you my part of the story. We'll talk about why, how, and what replacements that I'm using in this video. I think this is a long time coming, actually. Even before when we started this YouTube channel, I was messing around with Premiere Pro while in university and also edited a few Overwatch highlight clips. Yeah, I was one of those people. The reason why I started with Premiere Pro was because, you know, everyone was using Premiere Pro and there are just a lot of tutorials online. So I ended up starting off with Premiere Pro. And when we started off this channel though, I immediately continued using Premiere Pro because I was already partially familiar with it. Yeah, it is a pirated version and I'm not afraid to admit it. But we'll come back to this later as I think this is an important point. Then I came to a fork in the road. Should I continue using Premiere Pro or migrate to something else? The choice was to pay Adobe or just go for an alternative actually. And we ended up paying Adobe because I was already using Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Audition and sometimes, but I do use it sometimes, After Effects. There's another software that I can actually live without and that is called Media Encoder but we'll not talk about this in this video. So in total, I'm using 6 software out of Adobe's catalog of like 50 or 60 applications. Then the years went by and I continued paying Adobe for you know their suite of software for years and my workflow was super fast with Premiere Pro. I even got this Keychron Q0 Plus number pad and reprogram it as a macro pad for Premiere Pro to speed up my workflow even faster. And uh, we also have a video talking about this thing, link at the top right corner there or down in the description below. Particularly during this year though, there were a few triggers that made me go F*** you Adobe. So here's the story. The first trigger is the way Adobe treats their suite of software. With the AI boom, Adobe has started to introduce a lot more AI stuff in their software. For example, Photoshop. Since I do use Photoshop a lot, I was able to use some of those new AI features. And I know many artists out there are very vocal about their hatred towards AI. But this is coming from my perspective, so I apologize if I offended any one of you. Regardless of where the AI data is trained from, they can produce some amazing results and it made my workflow go much faster. So that is my perspective. But that is also only for Photoshop. Premiere Pro is where I spend a vast majority of my time as I am the video editor for a total of three different channels. So this channel that you're watching, Nasi Lamak Tech, aka NL Tech. And then we also have another channel called Tech Creator, which I am also an editor of and sometimes do reviews on that channel as well. And also My Everyday Tech, which is less active, but it is mostly focused on home appliances. Now, Premiere Pro in itself is a very broken software even for my simple editing cases. I mean, long-time viewers of this channel will know that I am someone who just cuts the video, splice some b-roll, put it on top, put some text, and that's it. I don't use any fancy effects and whatnot. And yet, it lags to the point that I just get too frustrated with it. Opening two timelines to copy clips between one another? Lag. You want to add a few text layers on top of the frame? Lag. You want to add a Mogurt, the you know motion graphics template on top of your project? Lag. You want to scroll through a long screenshot? Lag. <sighs> Rendering a video, it takes absolutely forever. Seriously, one of these gaming test videos can take upwards of an hour to render, and yet the video is just supremely simple. And yet, year after year, Adobe doesn't seem to want to fix any of the issues going on with Premiere Pro. But they are always messing with the UI and kept changing superficial things, which I just think is very stupid of them to do such a thing. Everything else just seems stagnant. I use Audition to just remove noise from our audio recordings and also record audio while doing the gaming test video and whatnot. So, Audition to me is pretty disposable. And as for Lightroom Classic, I only use it to process raw photos and then export them. That's about it. I don't even use their catalog feature at all. After Effects is an app that I do use to edit Mogurt files that uh, we just downloaded from the internet and I want to make it mine. So 
that's the only time that I use After Effects. Maybe some motion tracking as well, but that rarely happens. But the times when I actually want to use After Effects to do motion tracking though, it lags so badly that I think I only use it for 5 times in total. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Media Encoder is a simple app that lets you pull all of your projects together and then you can press one single button to render all of those projects in a list. This is pretty useful if I just have you know a list of projects, click render, go to sleep, wake up and then all of the projects are rendered. And this is important to me because since Premiere Pro takes such a long time to render, I just use Media Encoder all the time. <laughs> yeah. And that was my workflow for a few years. I mean, can I really blame myself though? I just saw my favorite YouTubers at the time and I wanted to know how they're producing such videos and they said they're using Premiere Pro. So that's what I'm using because it's the industrial standard back in the days. And my second trigger to move out of Adobe though is the price. I got this email that says the price has been increased from 1,723 ringgit and 68 cents to 3,162 ringgit and 24 cents. I posted this on my personal Facebook page and it got a bit viral-ish. The comments share one single sentiment. Adobe is expensive and everyone is either recommending alternatives or just go pirate the Adobe software. And this comment is technically true as well. The reason why I got this price in the first place is because I just rizzed them up in the live support chat and they offered me a discount. I did this for many years and they gave me a discount every single time. The discount percentage will be different every time but just know that I never paid full price for it, ever. But that's the point. Why should I pay such a high price for a software suite that I only use 6 out of the 50 apps and services available and I'm paying for all of it, all at once. And yet they are super buggy. Yeah, and Adobe is also very sleazy as well. They say that I'm going to be billed 3,162 ringgit and 24 cents when this date arrives. And when I cancelled my plan, they told me that I can go back to using the entire suite of software for the price that I was paying last year, 1,723 ringgit and 68 cents. That won't get me back to the Adobe suite. But it just repels me further to know that Adobe is such a sleazy company. And my third trigger is, I think, when the stars align for me. When Adobe sent me the email notifying about the price increase, it was very near Black Friday. And you know what happens during Black Friday? Great deals with fantastic discounts and this popped up on my feed. Many people were already recommending me Affinity in the comment section, so I decided to just give it a try. It has most of the features that I use on Photoshop and the shortcut keys are also very similar so I decided to just f*** it and buy the full Affinity Suite at a supremely low price of 199 ringgit Malaysia which is actually less than 50 US dollars. It's kind of insane in terms of the value that they are offering. And I think this is also the time to talk about what I am going to use to replace the entire Adobe Suite. Affinity is going to replace Photoshop Audacity is going to replace Audition for audio recording. DaVinci Resolve is going to replace both Premiere Pro, After Effects, and since I do some simple audio processing on Audition, it kinda replaces Audition as well. Yes, it's that good of a software and yet it is free. You can download it for free on DaVinci Resolve's website. So go on. Download it, experiment with it, I'm very sure that you will be glad that you're not paying Adobe. Yeah, I did experience a time that I wanted to experiment with some fancy stuff on DaVinci Resolve and it said that I needed the DaVinci Resolve Studio version, the paid version. I mean, it's really not that expensive either, yet I can get a free copy when you purchase, you know, some Blackmagic design hardware. The only thing that is difficult to replace for me is Lightroom Classic. I'm dealing with raw photos on Affinity Photo but it sucks and it's really slow. Raw Therapy and Dark Table are free options but IMO, they're just not for me. I opted to try Capture One Pro and it also has a one-time purchase but it is just super expensive. I honestly do think that if you're looking for a good raw image processor, Lightroom is still one of the best ones out there. 
And hey, there's a photography bundle that bundles both Lightroom and Photoshop together. But it is very difficult to find this bundle as the search engine is purposefully trying to convince you to subscribe to the entire app suite. For me, transitioning to DaVinci Resolve was rather simple. I already had it set up like about 5 months ago when I was experimenting with it and I actually edited 2 or 3 videos using DaVinci Resolve like, you know, 5 months ago. This video about the 2TB AGI microSD card and the video where we talk about thermal throttling here were both done using DaVinci Resolve. And since my foundation was already set up, the transition from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve was rather seamless for me. And for the past 10 or so videos, those were actually all done using DaVinci Resolve too. And the render times are just much quicker. A video that's slightly over 2 minutes long took 3 minutes and 19 seconds to render on Premiere Pro. But DaVinci Resolve can render an entire review video, in this case the Vivo X200 Pro, an 11 minute video in just 3 minutes and 40 seconds. The difference in render time is just astounding. By the way, when we install the Adobe Creative Cloud app, it also comes with a bunch of different bloatware as well, like Adobe Bridge, the Adobe Content Synchronizer, Adobe Crash Processor, Adobe Genuine Service Integrity, all of this bullshit that leeches off your computer's resource while eating up your storage capacity. So if you want to leave Adobe entirely, here's how. First, make sure all of your projects that are using the Adobe Software Suite are completed before making the move. Also, please do ensure that you're familiarized with the new software before actually transitioning because this is important. I actually spent a whole month learning other software before actually transitioning to DaVinci Resolve and actually cancelling my subscription. So that's that. I didn't have any issues cancelling my subscription on Adobe's part, but I have seen horror stories where Adobe tells the customers that there will be an early cancellation fee. So your mileage will vary on this, so let me know how it is for you down in the comment section below. And then head to this website, scroll down, download the Adobe Cleaner tool. It's available for both Windows and Mac and you just run the software and it just cleans everything that is Adobe related. Well, not all because I do think that the Adobe Lightroom Classic catalog will still be there, but you get the idea. The apps, the PKG files, all of those stuff, they are all cleaned off. And with that, you are basically done. You are free from Adobe's shackle and it does feel liberating and a bit bittersweet for me. I pirated and learned Photoshop back when it was in version CS2 and started using other Adobe software as well. It provided me with all of these tools that I use in this career to make all of the videos that you watch on our channel, but the software just became worse and worse over the years, while the competitors have already surpassed them far beyond. Speculation here, Photoshop is a household name at this point and making it kinda easy to pirate means that the next generation of creators can already start off with Adobe and hopefully those people who are currently pirating Adobe software can be converted into a paying customer in the future. That means they got you at the chokehold way before you even start your career. Yeah, that happened to me and I'm sure many people in my generation at least will have gone through this experience as well. But I managed to break free from the shackles, so you can too. My word of advice is, if you're feeling like Adobe software is just buggy and broken, you don't have to live with it. Find alternatives and stop paying Adobe. There are many other better and free software out there in the world right now, like DaVinci Resolve. There are many tutorials online right now and I am using all of those resources as I am still adapting to the new workflow. But the workflow on DaVinci Resolve is so good that this macro pad seems kind of useless to me right now. And yeah, DaVinci Resolve is just that intuitive. If you're planning or has already broken free from Adobe, please do share your experience with us down in the comment section below. I'd love to know all of your stories and also please do inspire others to leave Adobe as well. And I'll see you guys probably in the next year. So have a great holiday and stay safe. Merry Christmas, even though it's I think it will be belated and Happy New Year!